The MTN 530 News. Everybody, Scott Breen and Harden for tonight. We meet a college sophomore rocking school, career, and athletics. Find out why she's choosing to give up one straight ahead. I'm Mitch Laggy. The number of overdose deaths across the nation has climbed 30% over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'll tell you what that means locally coming up. But first, wildfire season has exploded in Montana, leading Governor Greg Gianforte to issue an executive order declaring a statewide fire emergency. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. As of July 14th, nearly 1,400 wildfires had broken out around the state, burning more than 141,000 acres. Of those fires, approximately 78% have been human caused, which has led to a significant workload for volunteer and agency wildland firefighters. Unfortunately, the extremely dry and dangerous conditions make it even more likely that we'll see even more fires in the future. Today's executive order will help obtain additional resources and tools for state wildland firefighters, including the authorization for the governor to mobilize the Montana National Guard. It will also provide relief for local and volunteer firefighters who've been strained under this record-setting fire season. Well, not even an hour after that order was issued, a new fire is sparked on the eastern side of the Crow Reservation. A half dozen smoke jumpers and two helicopters have responded to the Blacktail Creek blaze. The Bighorn Canyon National Recreation Facebook page noted that the smoke is visible from both sides of the park. That blaze was started by lightning and has burned about 50 acres, we're told. It's not threatening any structures. There is some good news to report. Crews have continued to make good progress on the MY Complex fire in Musselshell County, and officials will soon begin to reassign resources to other regional fires. Those three fires have burned a total of nearly 28,000 acres, but the largest of the fires, the Musselshell Trail Road fire, is now completely contained. The Western Road fire sits at 79% containment, while the Peterson fire, which has burned just over 4,000 acres, is now 26% contained. And the state's largest wildfire, the Robertson Draw fire, now sits at 85% containment. That fire, which began just over a month ago by an off-road motorcyclist, is estimated to have burned nearly 30,000 acres. Fire officials say that all but the northwest corner of the fire has now been secured. 82 fire personnel continue to assist in getting that fire to 100% containment. All right, now turning to Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Fire danger definitely high right now, Ed. Fortunately, one ingredient is missing, or it could be even worse. That's right. Uh, that's We're talking about wind. You, you, normally, we talk about the big three, hot temperatures, low humidity, and wind. But with the lack of wind, that could also be affecting air quality as more of that smoke uh, falls across the region. And we're also talking about hot conditions, which could start to affect your health, especially by the time we start getting from Saturday onward, with the temperatures hitting 100 degrees with a light wind even become more of a concern. So overall, with the hot temperatures around will continue to look at some wildfire risks. Certainly isolated storms could produce lightning and periods of wind, especially tomorrow and Friday. And then we'll just be looking at that very hot pattern digging in. We'll talk about just how hot those temperatures will get with a complete forecast coming up in a few minutes. Well, new data out from the Centers for Disease Control shows a steep rise in overdose deaths during the COVID-19 pandemic. That could be partly because social distancing, limited access to addiction and mental health treatment for many. Q2's Mitch Leggy takes a closer look at the problem. In 2020, over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, a record number of Americans died from drug overdoses. In Billings, the need for mental health care was much the same, with a record number of people reaching out for help to Rimrock Foundation in Billings. The pandemic actually produced a second epidemic, and that is mental health crisis and an increase of substance use disorders. Our phones are ringing off the hook. Nationwide, overdose deaths in 2020 compared to 2019 have increased by 30%. 92,000 Americans died from overdose in 2020, according to data released Wednesday by the Centers for Disease Control. The same data shows that Montana's overdose deaths jumped 12%, comparing 2020 to 2019. Last year, the state had 157 people die of overdose. That's 18 more than were recorded in 2019. There's a high suspicion that a lot of people might be going without services. People are really struggling, and as we come out of the pandemic, they're really looking for 
for solutions to deal with something that may have arisen during the pandemic. We've been seeing in the national news how there's been an increase of overdose deaths. We anecdotally know that that's happening in our own community too. Kosovich said the Rimrock Foundation's Billings Mental Health and Addiction Center has seen the number of referral patients skyrocket over the past few years. Comparing the first six months of the past three years, the clinic has seen a 122% increase in people seeking services. In the first six months of 2019, the clinic saw 283 people referred for mental health treatment. 2020 saw 358 referrals, and 2021 exploded, with 629 people requesting help. Kosovich added that the best thing to do for somebody who is struggling with their mental health is to reach out for help in any way possible. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Well, the drugs most responsible for deaths in Montana were stimulants like methamphetamine and opiate drugs such as heroin and other prescription painkillers. In a unanimous ruling today, the Montana Supreme Court soundly rejected the Republican legislature's efforts to subpoena documents and investigate the court and the state's judiciary, judiciary for alleged bias. Now, one of the justices also delivered a tongue lashing to GOP lawmakers, calling their efforts a blatantly partisan attempt to undermine Montana's independent judiciary. Here's MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison with more. Wednesday's ruling concerned several subpoenas issued in April by Republican lawmakers that had obtained or sought to obtain internal court emails and documents. The GOP lawmakers said the documents could shed light on whether the court or state judges have any prejudicial bias against GOP laws that may come before the courts as to their constitutionality. The unanimous court not only struck down the subpoenas but said they cannot be reissued and that all documents obtained in April must be returned. Writing for the court, Justice Beth Baker said legislative subpoenas must pertain to a legislative purpose and that these clearly did not. The court said if lawmakers think judges have acted unethically, they can file a complaint with the State Judicial Standards Commission. And it said if the legislature wants to obtain public records from the court, there are other acceptable ways to do it rather than a blanket subpoena demanding all records without any review for privacy concerns. But Supreme Court Justice Dirk Sandifer went further in a special concurrence. He said Republicans in control of the legislature and the executive branch are trying to undermine the only nonpartisan branch of government in an effort to attain authoritarian power unconstrained by constitutional limits. Sandifer said the GOP has recklessly ginned up a fake crisis to try to undercut independent judicial review of laws they've passed. Republican officials certainly didn't back down Wednesday, replying with equally harsh language. State Senator Greg Hertz, who chairs a committee created by the GOP to investigate the judiciary, called the decision judicial activism at its worst, poisoned by massive conflict of interest. And a spokesman for Republican Attorney General Austin Knudsen said the court has engaged in unethical behavior that is embarrassing for the state and shameful. So what happens now in this political face-off? It's hard to know at this point, but one thing the high court made clear on Wednesday, it's the one who interprets the law and decides whether that law or laws comply with the Constitution. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. The special committee created by Republicans to investigate the state judiciary currently has no scheduled meetings. Well, it's no secret that a lot of college students like to relax and stay away from books over the summer, but our Scott Breen found one in Hardin who actually doubled down on the workload her freshman year of college. Sometimes it's tough to tell where Journey Erickson excels most, school, career, or athletics. Um, I think they all balance each other out. I don't think I'd be as good as I am in running if I wasn't, you know, doing academics. It just kind of gives you a break from, you know, all of them. Growing up in Hardin, Journey followed footsteps of her mom as a runner. Turned out she was a member of Hardin's most dominant cross-country years, part of four straight Class A team titles. That's the best part of my high school years. But she never thought she'd be cut out for triathlon. I was like, no way. I will not do it. That was her mindset when MSU Billings reached out a little over a year ago, inviting her to join the Yellow Jackets Upstart Women's Program. For those not familiar, triathlon is the combination of running, biking, and swimming. Never one to back down from a challenge. Ready, go. Journey reconsidered and tiptoed in with the support of Yellow Jackets coach Kevin Bjerke. It was super understanding that I've never, you know, did triathlon before, so he worked with me quite a bit. I wasn't experienced in biking or swimming, so we had to start from like ground zero. Anyway, Journey, great swim. 
She used to swim for fun and remembers first learning to ride a bike with her dad at a hardened park not far from this very interview. I made it around this tree and I fell and I remember like, no, I'm never getting on a bike again, so. Not only did she get back on, she exceeded triathlon expectations as a college freshman and competed for MSUB's track and field team and carried a 4.0 both semesters of her pre-nursing major. That earned her scholar All-American notoriety. Go, here we go. It's not shocking to longtime Harden coach Cindy Farmer, who watched Journey dabble in basketball and develop into a cross-country team captain. Oh man, you know, her stepping in, you know, as a leader, as a freshman, and then carrying that on through the sophomore, junior, and senior year. And you know how it is being a, a captain and a leader. You have to have a strong mental toughness to you, and, um, and she did. And still does. Rather than take this summer off, Journey puts on scrubs for a part-time CNA job here at Hardin's Bighorn County Memorial Hospital. She helps patients with daily activities. Like get their meals ready for them and help them get showered and dressed and just kind of help with the everyday sort of thing. She says she's been dialed into this career path since high school, where, by the way, she was one of five valedictorians, all girls, with several on that dominant cross-country team. And here she is, once again following mom's course. She's a psychiatric nurse practitioner, so I really look up to her. You know, she helps a lot of people, and I like helping people. Journey says she's interested in mental health, but also eager to learn the spectrum of nursing choices. And she's already set on where she'd like to practice. I really want to work on reservations or like low income communities, anywhere that they really need help like that. And not surprisingly, she's decided to give up college athletics and transfer to Montana State entering her sophomore year. I really enjoyed it, but I just kind of want to focus on my academics and becoming like the best nurse I can be. In Harden, Scott Breen, MTN Sports. Thanks, Scott. And if you're wondering about her name, Journey says a lot of people think she was named after the band. Well, the truth is it comes from her line of family in Wolf Point. Up next on uh, tonight's MTN 530 News here on Q2, beyond the books and into the real world, Montana teens converge in the capital city as they dive into the police academy. That story coming up next and a little later in sports. Star siblings will catch up with a pair of Montana brothers as they relive their Olympic experiences.